Hello everybody. Today we're going to look at precision rectifiers. First, we're going to look at a plain old rectifier. Here's a simple half wave rectifier, right? We've got a, an AC source over here. Here's our little switching diode, 1k ohm resistor for a load. Now, in the case of a power application, you know, if we're going to take uh, AC wall current and turn it into DC, um, the drop on this diode is not so bad. You know, if you have maybe a step down transformer and you're pulling 50 volts, 20 volts, something like that, and you lose 7 tenths or so, that's not, you know, a deal breaker. That's not so bad. But there are times when we're not interested in uh, power translation. What we're interested in is wave shaping, some kind of signal processing. And we want to see what the waveform looks like with great accuracy. So what I've set up here is a one volt peak signal. Now, if this was an ideal diode, what we would get out here would be just nice half waves, right? One volt peak. Um, but as we're going to see, there is a drop on this diode and uh, we're going to lose a, a, a sizable amount of signal. So let's come up here and do a, a, a transient analysis. So I'm going to run out to two milliseconds because this is a one kilohertz source. So we'll see a couple of cycles. And here's the result. Okay. All right. So our generator, here's our nice one volt peak sine wave. And here's our uh, V out here in this sort of maroonish color. And you can see, well, it is sort of a half wave, but man, it's not really nice. I mean, it should be just following this guy right here and then going flat. And if we look at this distance from here to here, Right, you can see that's over um, 500 millivolts. That's maybe you know 600-ish millivolts. Bingo! That's the drop on D1. Now, if we went further with this, if we said, hey, um, you know, what if we have, you know, maybe a couple hundred millivolts for a source? We're not going to get anything out of here. The diode's going to chew up everything. So, eh, we want to see something else, right? We want to we want to get some other way of doing this. You could possibly, uh, depending on the application, maybe add a DC offset to sort of overcome this initial sort of uh, energy hill, this initial six or seven tenths of a volt. But there are other ways of doing it. If we're not going to do a really, really high frequency, um, we can use an op amp. All right. Now, what we've done with this little op amp is, uh, you know, here's the diode that we're going to use. And I've got a load resistor out here. And don't worry about this cap just yet. I've set this to a small enough value, 50 picofarads, that we can ignore it for now. Um, but basically what I've done is I've taken this diode and put it inside the feedback loop of a uh, unity gain buffer, right? A series parallel, non-inverting sort of amplifier. This has a nice effect in that um, regardless of the polarity of the input, in other words, regardless of whether or not the diode is on or off, the source always sees a high uh, input impedance, that of the op amp. All right. So how does this thing work? All right. Again, let's ignore this capacitor and we just have a load resistor out here. Well, um, when the signal comes up positive, right, we're going to produce a positive signal out of the op amp, pin six here, the terminal I've labeled V op amp. And until this diode turns on, we'll have an open loop case, right? You imagine this is just being a, an open switch. So we don't get any signals. So what, that, what, what that means is the output at pin 6 is going to climb very rapidly until eventually it produces a signal that's bigger than the drop across uh, the diode. And that signal gets fed back until eventually, of course, uh, this V error voltage is ideally zero. At that point, we've sort of compensated for this diode drop. Uh, one way of looking at that is to say we have reduced that drop by the sacrifice factor. And of course, that can be, you know, a factor of several thousand, depending on the frequency that we're looking at. This circuit is frequency limited by the op amp. So you know, this thing is not going to work at, uh, you know, megahertz. But for low frequencies, for audio frequencies, this will work just great, as we'll see shortly. But in any case, um, as the input goes up and down, the um, uh, up output of the op amp goes up and down by an extra seven tenths or six tenths, you know, whatever the diode takes as long as the input's positive. Now, as soon as the uh, input goes negative, right, pin six over here, 
starts to go negative and what that's going to do is reverse bias the diode so the diode basically becomes an open open switch in which case this output pin will just go to ground in other words it'll go to zero volts and what we'll have is positive half wave rectification and if we flip the diode in the other direction of course we'll get the exact opposite we'll get negative uh, rectification half wave but what we'll see here is that because the op amp is going to compensate for the forward drop on the diode even with very small inputs we're going to have a nice looking output so i've set up an input over here at two volts peak one kilohertz and once again we'll do a uh, transient analysis okay so let's um change some of these colors right let's take this guy and we're going to do a little zoom in here in just a sec let's make that blue that looks a little nicer um, and maybe this olive olive uh, maybe we'll turn that into oh what do you say here how about uh, fuchsia okay all right grab our little uh, legend there so um, first of all the input right that's vg1 that's this, this bright fuchsia thing that's our sine wave right our two volt peak sine wave coming along um, and then we can see let me just select that there's the blue that is the output of the circuit the v load and we can see at least at this magnitude we can see that that's a half wave we're going to have to zoom in to get a better look but before we do take a look at v out op amp right this is a little bit higher than the uh, input signal and the output signal because the output is tracing the input and this positive half wave and then it goes to this big negative all right notice this is going down to about maybe negative 13 negative 14 volts somewhere in that vicinity this is where the input's going of course negative and as i said when this goes negative the diode gets reverse biased opens up and you know the output over here at the load is in fact um, at zero volts but the op amp output versus the load output right the op, op amps output is going down to negative v sat right because we basically have an open uh, loop at this point right this guy's reverse biased so um, that just kind of like acts like a, a comparator in a way it just drives down to negative saturation and that's what we're seeing in this region right here all right so you can see this a little better a couple different ways if we um, separate the curves out okay we can see uh, there's our input signal right here's our nice half wave load and here is this sort of funky looking uh, signal coming out of the op amp now i'm going to go back and uh, collect these curves and instead i'm i'm going to zoom in so we can see this a little bit better as long as we understand this is just going to sat that'll be sufficient okay so if we look at this all right again uh, here's my load we can see this is a pretty nice half wave there's a little bit of a sort of a, a dig right here right right where the uh, transition is from positive to negative at zero cross but i want you to look at the output of the op amp here notice what we have right between the um, between the, uh, the V load, which in this region is also you know, the input signal. Right? Just select that to verify, right? There's your nice fuchsia signal. So this distance here is about seven tenths of a volt. You know? Here's a, you know, these are uh, basically tenths over here. So if you count these up, that is the potential that uh, is required to forward bias the diode. So the op amp's producing that little bit extra, right? They're on the positive half wave um, to compensate. And then once the signal, once the input signal goes negative, bang, this thing goes down into negative saturation. And the output of the uh, circuit just stays right here. Okay, so what's the deal with this little dig right here? You know, maybe we can zoom in on that again. Right, I got this little spiky thing happening okay now what is that 
Well, um, essentially what's going to happen here is, is um, there's a finite amount of time for that signal to go out of the uh, saturation, okay? Um, the op amp has a slew rate. In this case, the, uh, the 081 is about 13 volts per microsecond. So it's going to take a few microseconds for this thing to go from negative sat back up. And during that time period, right, we get this situation where the op amp is sort of trying to catch up. And we get a little bit of distortion over here. All right, so the faster the op amp is, the smaller these little zero cross uh, issues are going to be. All right, so if I had maybe a 741 on here, which is considerably slower, this would look a lot worse. Okay. All right, so what's the deal? Right, what's the deal um, with this capacitor? Well, we can actually use this capacitor to stretch out the pulse because what's going to happen over here um, is that on the positive portion of the wave, right, we're going to charge up this cap. It's going to be charged by the op amp. And then once the signal starts to go below that level, wherever we are, like we hit the peak of the sine wave and we're going down, what ends up happening is you wind up reverse biasing this diode. So the cap just discharges through the load and it's going to fill out that signal. All right. So let's crank this up to uh, a value that we can kind of uh, you know, see what's going on here. I'm going to make this like 5 nanofarads, which is um, not very aggressive. We'll put a bigger one in here in just a moment, but you might be able to see this. Okay, so you can see this little bit of a swoop in here. All right, once again, I'm going to um, zoom in just a little bit. All right, so here's my sine wave coming in. It's going down. And right here, right, there is the transition. Um, there's the cap discharging. So it's stretching that pulse out. So if we go to a much larger value, all right, so maybe I make this uh, like 50 nanofarads. This is going to be a little bit more um, extreme in effect. All right, so you can see what's happening here, right? Taking much longer. Now, if we put an even bigger value in here, um, this will basically just give me the peak value. In other words, what I'll wind up with is a, sort of a peak detector. It's going to uh, track the maximum value of the input right, within the time, uh, the discharge time of the RC. Okay, so the bigger the cap is, the longer this is going to take to discharge. And we can kind of hold that peak value. All right, so that's a, a nice little sort of addition if we need to. The obvious question at this point is, what do I do for um, full wave? Well, full wave's a little bit more complicated, but fear not, we have a full wave rectifier over here. Now, this is essentially in two parts. So I want to draw your attention to sort of two halves of this circuit. This first part up here, right, which is the second op amp, these resistors here, this is just a summing amplifier. Now the top channel, if you will, the top input has a gain of one, right? 10K over 10K. And the bottom one has a gain of two, 10K over 5K. So that's all this is. It's just a summing amplifier. Here's my input back here. This is the interesting bit. This is a precision half wave rectifier, kind of like the one we just saw, but it's an inverting version of that. And if you ignore the diodes for just a sec, R1 and R2, 10K over 10K, this thing has a gain of 1, all right? So how does this work? Okay, well, you know, what are the diodes doing for us? Well, um, you know, cons consider maybe a positive input, right? So a positive input, we would have current going like this. And we have basically two paths, two choices, either through R2 or through D1. Um, you know, a positive input, because this is coming in on the minus uh, terminal, is going to force the output, pin 6, negative. What would that do? Well, that would reverse bias D1. So this is a high impedance path. Current's not going through D1. It's going through R2. 
And because the two resistors are the same size, we would expect the voltage developed across R2 is the same as the voltage developed across R1. Don't forget that point right here is a virtual ground. So we develop this voltage, and of course there is a path back through D2. But D2 is inside the feedback loop, so as we saw in the preceding example, this will be compensated for. All right, off we go. Um, this output is not going to go down to negative SAT, or positive SAT, depending on how you configure the diodes, um, like the preceding circuit. The reason being is this point over here is your virtual ground, and you're going to tie this right through this path uh, with these diodes. Okay, so whatever this voltage is, this pin 6 can't be uh, beyond 7 tenths of that, so it's going to lock this. So this circuit tends to be a little bit quicker in response, those little sort of zero cross digs, um, this thing tends to work a little bit better. All right? But in any case, um, so we're going to produce that voltage. So in the ideal case, you can kind of imagine this is an open, this is a short for the positive input, and we just get a signal out here. Okay? So, you know, if I have, like in this case, one volt peak, I have a positive one volt peak. So what comes out here is a negative one volt peak, right? So it's a gain of one and inverting. So I have this negative one volt peak. All right? Now that's going to go into the summing amplifier. This has a gain of 2, this particular channel. So I have this negative peak right now at 1 volt. It gets multiplied um, by 2. All right? And inverted. Don't forget this is an inverting summing amplifier. So I have that peak of 1 volt. It gets flipped up to a sine wave. But now it has a gain of 2 volts, okay? Or excuse me, a gain of 2, which gives us 2 volts. Okay, that's what's going to appear out here at V out. At the same time, however, the signal is fed through the upper channel. And the upper channel just has a gain of 1 inverting. So this sine wave just gets flipped upside down, right? I have a, a negative 1 volt peak sine wave right, from this upper channel. Well, that gets added to the um, signal that we just saw a second ago, right? That 2 volt. So what happens when you have a negative 1 volt sign and you add a 2 volt positive sign to it? Well, you know, they partially cancel and we wind up with a 1 volt uh, positive peak. Okay? All right. So far, so good. What about the negative half wave of this input? Well, the negative half wave, you know, on the, on the upper channel, that just gets a gain of uh, minus 1, so that turns into a positive 1 volt peak. But what happens out here? Well, if this is negative, we're going to try to pull current this way. Okay, so again, there's two paths, R2, D1. Well, there's an obvious you know, sourcing of current through D1 this way, and unfortunately, or actually fortunately, depending on how you want to look at it, um, D2 is going to be reverse biased. So there is no path for current out here. In other words, the drop across R2 is going to be 0, and therefore V half, as I'm calling it, the output of the half wave rectifier, is going to be zero. So we get zero plus the half wave that we got from the upper channel, and that gives us the second half wave. All right, put those two things together and we have full wave rectification. Let's uh, do a little transient analysis over here and take a look. Bingo! All right, so let's do a little color change once again. Uh, what do you think? We have a vote for blue. Yeah, okay. All right, so, oops, forgot my legend out there. All right, so um, our input voltage is the blue. All right, there's our one volt peak sine wave coming in, looking good. Um, the the uh, Let's just jump right to the output here, real quick, like. And you can see. Yeah, there's my nice halfway, excuse me, full wave rectification that I'm getting. And if we look at V half, we can see there's the inverting half wave rectification as we expected. Right? So that the guy got flipped. Um, the other half of it is, is uh, zero volts because of the diodes. And then, of course, that goes through the, um, the second half, the lower channel over here, gets flipped up to a two volt peak adds in with the inverted signal from the upper, and we wind up with this nice thing right here. Okay, beautiful. Um, again, it is speed limited, 
you know, by the op amp. Another issue here is the matching of the resistors. If we have, uh, you know, typical tolerances on these things, we can get some mismatching because this really does require good matching on all these components. So just to, sh just to show here, if I were to take this 10K, I'm going to leave all the other ones, you know, in their ideal position. But um, I'm going to change this to 11K. All right, so I've got one resistor that's off by 10%. Everybody else is exactly what they should be. Um, and what we're going to see here is that, you know, this no longer has a gain of 1. It actually has a gain of 1.1. So that the, the uh, cancellation that we're expecting on this channel versus this channel is not going to be perfect. And what's going to wind up happening is a little bit of an asymmetry in our output waveform. Okay, so this right here, that is our uh, output waveform. Right, just to verify that, put the legend out here. All right, so that maroon is the V out. And you can see what's happening, right? That one side got a little bit too much gain. So, you know, the cancellation is not perfect. And you can see what's happening with this peak, right? This peak and this peak are not quite the same. And that's going to happen if this resistor is off. It's going to happen if this one's off, if that one's off. Um, the only thing uh, that wouldn't cause this is if R5 is off. Because basically this, cha this would change the gain of both halves, both channels. So this would just scale everything up and down. Um, in other words, if everybody else is perfect, changing this one just gives us a little bit more or a little bit less, right? just like a little bit of a gain or a loss. But there you go. This is um, a nice full wave rectifier. It's one way of doing a full wave rectifier. There are more ways of doing this. Um, but this is one possibility. And you could, of course, do this with a single dual op amp um, and an a, a eight pin mini dip package. And that would work out pretty well. In this case, that would be a TL082. Uh, right? So you have two op amps in one package. And off you go.